Hello, I'm Crosby Kemper. I'm the director of the Institute of Museum and Library Services, the federal government's support and resource for libraries and museums across the nation. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce five wonderful young people, the 2020 National Student Poets. They will serve for the next year as ambassadors for poetry and the imagination. Our five muses are Maddie Dietz, Anthony Wiles, Isabella Ramirez, Ethan Wong, and Manasi Garg. They will bring their poetry across the country, initially virtually and eventually, we hope, in person. Growing up is about finding your identity. Right now, our country is itself trying to find its identity and going through a phase of growing up uh, and resolving its problems. And the work of these young poets is a great example to us of how deep and beautiful poetry can be not only an exploration of identity, but about the creation of identity as well. We'd like to thank our partner, the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers. We thank our young poets uh, for their service to poetry and to the country. And as President John Adams said, I study politics and war that my children may study mathematics and philosophy, and that their children may study painting and music and poetry. We are lucky that these young people studied poetry, even luckier that they have written some beautiful poetry, and still luckier that they will take it on the road to the nation. And so I say, as Ralph Waldo Emerson said to Walt Whitman on publication of The Leaves of Grass, I greet you at the beginning of a great career. Thank you. Thank you so much to our NSPP partners and sponsors, including the IMLS, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the Poetry Foundation, the Academy of American Poets, and the Wonderkinder Foundation. And a huge special thanks to Olivia Morgan. Being a part of the National Student Poets Program, I think genuinely means like having kind of a family forever. People want to help you. People are excited that you have received this award. They're excited for you. They want to help you. So email them, reach out to them. Even if you don't get the response you want, you've made a point of connection or maybe they can divert you to someone else who can help you. Hi, I'm Ethan Wong, the National Student Poet in 2020 for the Southwest region, and I'll be reading my poem, Waves. Kanagawa Crest empty sea spray cries, peeled layers of coral and young blue salt water, shatter specks, accumulated grains of white, voices muddled Yucatan opal sands. This L ray portrait of blurred emerald sapphires, those lonely Hayama stars, gemstone night skies. Your voice, sheltered in tangerine goodbyes, is always subdued in my memory. Your eyes entwine elusive hollowness, demure reminders of a kindness. Yet it has been three winters by. Insisted plated leaves steadily scatter and a blurring shifting coastline reminds me. Perhaps your eyes have already shed youth's maraschino tears, sun bleached fronds of a heart. After all, our heedless chests furl no aortic tongues to sing of a forever. Toss aside memoirs and throw away lockets swept away by hordes of time's fine grains. Remind me of blemishes I've grown, a sparkle blanketed in shards of night. The wonder I left at pit stop memories and the golden heart I pierced myself to numb the scars of a flowering quince bristle. Still, by a violence rent self-serving of the earth, all divisive paths of memoriam, soft deaths of an hour or half second lay forgone in an ocean madness. Ishiki ties will froth at your shins while Caribbean rains line my footsteps. Then the wave will empty and will share a whist, mistful glance through the waves of a cracked hourglass. The less you know, <laughs> and the more you're willing to mess up and grow and just enter this new world, I think the more fun you're gonna have. I know for me personally, I was really scared because I've never done anything that big before and you don't know what you're doing, but that's, that's all exciting. You're not supposed to know what you're doing. And yeah, I think it's just a big part of finding yourself as an artist. So be as confused as you can be. Hi, my name is Isabel Ramirez and I'm the National Student Poet for the Southeast Region and I will be reading my poem, Mama. I'm sitting on my mama's bed and she's on the brink of breaking down over her homework. 
I can see the glint of a blinking cursor and the tears glossing over her eyes as our hands search for words in a language all too foreign to her. She said I could count in both Spanish and English by the time I was 18 months old, but it's taken her 21 years and counting to flatten out the unruling kinks of her language. My mama's English is a stubborn wine stain on a white dress. She scrubs at her twisted tongue, desperate to clean the spice, el cilantro, la salsa, that is her accent. Her accent is the tambourine she hides in the back of her mouth. Behind the ivory piano keys that are her teeth, she speaks a merengue, bachata, ranchera, tonada, that she mutes to make room for her English. My mama's English gets told it's pretty good for being an immigrant, to which she replies, you've got some nerve for being a gringa, because my mama wasn't a stay-at-home mom for 15 years to be told her English needed housekeeping. The beauty of my mama's English is that she doesn't need it to knock your head off your shoulders. Call her a luchador because she could make you tap out faster than you can say her English isn't good enough. My mama's English is me correcting her at the dinner table. It's me laughing when she can't find the right syllables and sounds and the words don't fit quite right in her mouth. It's a downturn of her lips at the expense of my smile because her English is not the punchline of a joke that's gotten too old. My mama's English is a pinata she got me on my 10th birthday. Big and bright and pink and purple, but hollow on the inside. It's her count to three, uno, dos, tres, as she spun me blindfolded, dizzy, and facing the wrong direction. It's the swing and miss of my bat and the candy and confetti that falls and the final hit that breaks it open. It's a game of pin the tail on the donkey. No matter how many times you play, you never just get it quite right. It's a quinceanera I never had overrated and stereotypical, distastefully too Latina. It's the number of birthday candles that melt hot wax onto the cake she made from scratch. It's the reason my birthday is not just a happy birthday, but a feliz cumpleaños. It's the reason that when I go to my friend's parties, I want to sing happy birthday twice because mama never let us blow out candles before singing in Espanol. My mama's English is the $1.35 Cuban coffee I drive her to get every Saturday. Itching at the back of her throat, bitter and hard to swallow, only sweet from the sugar left in the foam she licks off her top lip. It's the reason she insists the Starbucks Double Espresso doesn't have the same kick. It's the reason I'm sitting on Mama's bed, watching her eyes swell as she fumbles with the keys. It's the reason she got into graduate school at 42, why I help her with her homework before I do my own. It's why the bottom of her computer burns my lap with each Oxford comma and restructured sentence and fixed grammar rule. It's why she doesn't end up crying when I whisper that everything will be okay. My mama's English is the reason I can tell her in two ways that she is my everything, mito because her love knows no language. The advice I'm gonna give to 2020 is advice you're probably gonna hear over and over again, but you're gonna need to hear it every single time. You deserve it. You are amazing because your work is just so, so amazing. You have the opportunity to really make impactful changes in a lot of kids' poetic and outside of poetic even lives. And I'm really confident that you're gonna do an amazing job of it. And I'm so, so excited to see all the amazing things you do. But the first step in doing all those amazing things is realizing you deserve it. Because you do. I'm Maddie Dietz, and I'm the national student poet representing the Midwest region. And I will be reading Violet Apocalypse. She held out the peach she'd kept in her pocket and I crowed my yeses and yeses and a dozen times, yes, we don't get thousands anymore. We don't get hundreds. Both were bruised. Both were warm and overdue. We ate the flesh of it together. Teeth sank into the rust sweet of overripe fruits of yesterday, one of the last not coffined in a can. Our fingers slick and sticky with yellow syrup clasped around each other over the fuzz. Salt and peach do not mix well, so I held the crying until the last strands of red were picked away, more bitter from cyanide than from missing it already. I kissed the wooden stone of the fruit as softly as I could. We set it by the almost window to dry. Watched as the storm outside raged, nuclear heat warmed our concrete walls, and the last remaining roaches still slipping through the cracks of extinction tap tapped at our window for a taste. On the fourth day, I held the pit to test. 
cross-legged on floor, fingers clawed tight around my wedding cake, grinding it into dust into the rough of the ground. Hour on Tuesday, three on Wednesday, six on Sunday, to poke my finger through our engagement, that pretty little ring, big enough for either one of us. I wear it on my thumb, and she wears it on her index finger. We trade every other day. We set it by our pillow at night like the baby we cannot have. This is something that you can really extract like an amazing experience from and something that you can create friends from, you know, you can create networking possibilities from just, it's like a journey for yourself more than it is just like something you can slap on a college application and turn in. At the end of the day, we're all poets, we're all creators and you know, wherever that takes us is where we go and like just to be really appreciative of this program and get the most out of it as you can. Hi, my name is Anthony Wiles, and I'm the National Student Poet representing the Northeast region. And today, I'll be reading one of my original poems called No Not I, But of Appalachia. No not I of the islands of the Caribbean Sea, which step from the water with names like Tortola and Trinidad, but of the rugged emerald mountains of Appalachia, crisscrossed by rivers and creeks that carve out valleys such as the Shenandoah and Kanawha. No, not I, of the waterside towns of Charlotte, Amalia, and Port of Spain, where seas of tourists and locals fuse to form cosmopolitan enclaves, but of nearly abandoned holler towns like Crystal and McComas, where gas stations and the occasional general store are the only people bringers. I come not from Caribs and Tainos, sugarcane plantation African slaves and free West Indian Creoles, Dutch, French, and British slavers, but from Sapanis and Cherokees, triracial Islet Melungeons, free and enslaved Africans, Scotch Irish farmers, both master and indentured. I listen not to soca and dance hall, calypso and reggae, where cats, coffee, and chinsia are stars, but to bluegrass and country, where Charlie Pride and Darley Parton and Valerie June reign supreme, lily white as some of them may be. I eat not rice and peas, mangoes and rum and curry goat, but beans and cornbread, apricots and moonshine and pig's feet. Yet somehow, these people, places, things that I come from, that I am of, do not supposedly look like me. And thus, I sought refuge in people, places, things that vaguely resembled me, represented me. Where I did not see myself, I fashioned anew, yet I always yearned to find myself in what I always knew. For Appalachia is home, but for all I knew, it was the place I wasn't meant to be. I saw myself in nothing I'd always embraced as my own, for Appalachia was fed to me as not to be proud of, to embrace as my own. A place of despair and disrepair, where nothing of value and culture exists, where people like me do not exist. So to the West Indies I went, leaving my heart in Appalachia, my identity caught up in this jumble of geography. But alas, I came home to find a place where my heart was at peace, where my identity could rest and be nurtured, where I could be me. Know not I of the islands of the Caribbean Sea, which step from the waters with names like Tortola and Trinidad, but of the rugged emerald mountains of Appalachia, crisscrossed by rivers and creeks that carve out valleys such as the Shenandoah and Kanawha, where there are people just like me. The program definitely changed how I saw myself as like a poet and one big component of this was being able to meet the other four national student poets and feeling like I was part of this community of people who really care about poetry and are like literary ambassadors in their community. My advice for the class of 2020 is to be really courageous. It's gonna be a difficult year with like a lot of stuff happening, but I do really believe that they can find a lot of courage to continue writing using like language as a way to like heal, I feel like in this really difficult time. Hi, I'm Monacy Gerg. I'm the National Student Poet of the West and I'm from California and I'll be reading Tonight Alone in the Queen's Apartment. Tonight alone in the Queen's Apartment, you watch light unspool from street lamps, curl under chins like a noose, watch a fly limp up the windowsill, wonder if this is how adults are born. 
trembling on the floorboards, curled up under page six of the New York Times, body bowed in reverence to God's onion billboards and yellow light skylines. Jim Baker is on tonight and he tells you that God loves you. He really does, but he can't see the utility bills piling up like a lifetime of sin by the door. Can't see the shadow of your breath shuddering hollow in the dust and it is still tonight and you are still alone. What would your parents say if they could see you? Your mother says she is always proud, but for you, the derivative of hurt will always be your face at the Lucknow airport when you stepped on the tarmac, her cheeks burnished with the afterimage of steam from pots of ginger tea and lovely evening chatter. Would she still be proud if she knew how you burned the edge of every star-spangled dream with Nag Champa incense? How you still sing lullabies from the old country when you find the darkness inconsolable? How you spit English words into hot pans like rye? Let them splatter oil onto the kitchen curtains? Even the birds here sing differently. You haunt sidewalks like a mirage. Watch people slip in and out of the labyrinth of orange light and smog. Punch crowds and corner delis. Wonder if this is how bodies forget their birthplace. Sitting at the noodle shop on 38th Avenue and decoding Langston Hughes. Tasting beer for the first time, throat singing. Wonder if this is how bodies forget the difference between a leaky trailer park faucet and the summer monsoons that flooded their girlhoods like a new wound. Between the hiss of plastic toaster and the mangoes that crack into hot Indian suns. Between Times Square preachers howling gospel through cracked windows and the seven sharpened tongues hiding in your mother's recipe book. Praying. When will you learn to love this country? You lie, awake. Feel the foreign names furl in your mouth like a receipt. Feel their corpses in the chill of the air. Emma, Lincoln, Martin. Wonder if tonight will be a renaissance or a funeral. And you cannot fall asleep. And tonight you will discover all the ways a body rewrites its history. You trace ribs into subway rails. Feel the imprint where they caved into your belly an avalanche of sandwich crusts and chalky pills. Bring lungs into greasy coupon chiaroscuro. Electrify blood vessels as power line grids. Unhook Hindi from the curl of your tongue. Crack bone into New York hustle. Suck the marrow until memory of ash disappears into every city rooftop. Dust every tenement dawn. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here today to celebrate the newly selected National Student Poets. I thank the Institute of Museum and Library Services and the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers. Congratulations to the 2020 National Student Poets. I was lucky enough to serve as a judge for this year's program. When I read your entries and watched your videos, I was struck by your originality, your heart, your sincerity, and of course, your singular imagination. As I read about your life's work, I was either smiling from ear to ear, or I was struck with emotion and sometimes had to put the pages down to take in the scope of your work. The path to poetry is not for the faint of heart. It calls on you to choose the road less traveled, to be most wildly yourself and to be unstoppable even when the world is asking you to function in a role that feels safer, more dependable, and known. I was a young poet once, too. Though I didn't have many resources or role models who looked like me, there was a very strong inner voice that told me to keep writing. While my cousins reached for more acceptable and sturdier professions, I dreamed of writing poetry collections as I attached rough drafts of poems to my wall, pages that fluttered in the breeze each time I opened a window or a door. Though I didn't know where exactly poetry would lead me, I had faith that the words on the page and that the stories within my imagination would ultimately guide me. Reading your work and learning about you, I know that you too have felt poetry's call 
that you have felt the undeniable necessity to harness feeling into words and the desire to share that love of poetry with others. Admittedly, the year 2020 has shown us some of the most difficult moments of our collective history. You and I and everyone watching have been a part of this hard-earned realization. We have shown that not only can we survive, but we can thrive. We can innovate in our cooperative creative urgency is what moves us forward as one human race. It is no coincidence that a pandemic and the strength of Black Lives Matter took hold of the world's consciousness simultaneously. We were asked as thinkers and artists and humanists, what was the greater threat? The illness of the body or the illness of hatred? and inequality. And these deep troubles were a universal call to arrive at common ground. Over the past year, we have been challenged to rise up, to sound out, and to reach toward our inner resources to create and to gather in the name of justice. For centuries, poetry bore witness to our collective struggles and has documented and translated our desire to feel seen and heard, to be safe without threatening the safety of others. Poetry announces itself as well as an art form for change. James Baldwin said, the world is before you. You need not take it or leave it as it was when you came in. So I ask you, what is it that you want to change? What is the imprint of yourself that you would like to leave behind? When I read the work of poets Nazim Hikmet, Pablo Neruda, Langston Hughes, or contemporary poets, Carolyn Forche and Lucille Clifton, I think, yes, it's the permanence of their voices that I will always remember, but their voices are ever more memorable because they felt a call to poetic duty. So I call on you to be impactful with your voice, to use your voice for good, for change, for solidarity and progress. There is no one else like you. When I was a young student, I thought that being different was a bad thing or that standing at a distance from everyone else made me an outsider, but that wasn't the lesson at all. Standing at a distance, I could see the world and be its most loyal observer. There is only one of you and in this next year, Make it count. Embrace this beautiful, singular experience that has been bestowed upon you. Yes, the ways in which we've gathered to experience art and poetry has changed, and more events and initiatives will take place virtually. And yes, it may be a challenge to envision reaching your audience through a screen. And yes, maybe sometimes you will yearn shaking hands with a fellow reader or wish to meet eyes with a perfect stranger who loves books and poetry just as much as you do. I've missed that too. I've missed people, but know they are still there. They are still listening and interacting and ready to receive your messages. One day we will all gather together again in person. Until then, feel the importance of this moment. Allow it to open doorways for you Move through those doorways and feel your own power. Never stop forging pathways for yourself and for others. I now have personal messages for the five national student poets. Maddie Dietz. Maddie, I'm so proud of the work that you're doing with young girls and giving them the resources and confidence to celebrate their voices. You recognized our current upheaval as an invitation to do better, to strengthen our community and to build bridges. Your impactful work embraces intimacy so readily and delves so fully into the complexity and musicality of youth and childhood. Manasi. Manasi, I love that you embrace experiences as a second generation Indian American woman, channeling a power I only wish that I had at your age. 
Your poems are lush with incense, lullabies, mangoes, and marrow. At the heart of your poems is ancestry and a willingness to sing and sing back to the spirit of family and history. Isabella, the world needs your voice as a strong Latinx poet. We need your light to bring attention to the important stories of writers of color and the LGBTQIA community. Your work is rich with full-throated incantation, boldly announcing itself, making space for itself by admission, announcement, cries of revelation, and sometimes even much needed confrontation. I return to your line, I made it out alive. I repeat those words to myself. Your epiphanies are an anthem for all of us. Ethan, I recall your application so clearly. I remember feeling that if I was a young person, I would have loved to have a role model like you. You spoke so openly and also so lovingly about your family, tradition, and your influences. I love too your experimentation with traditional and new forms and your willingness to be a maverick, to be special and extraordinary while embracing and acknowledging your essential past. Because you honor those who came before you, you will have everything you need to embark on the journey ahead. Anthony. Anthony, you're a person who knows exactly who you are and you claim it in your poetry where home is at the very center. Your poems are so tuned into atmosphere, places where the feeling of Appalachia come alive as you call on the landscape of rivers and valleys as much as you fill rooms with the scent of vanilla pistachio cake, collard greens, and cornbread. Yours is a poetry of heart and refuge. I am so proud of the each of you I am so surprised, impressed, and in awe of the work that you're making and the spirit that drives you forward. Take in this moment with pride at the same time that you take in the difficulties of our present state. When you can simultaneously hold these opposing feelings, joy and pain, sorrow and celebration, you then possess what beats at the heart of every poet, and that is emotional tension. You have before you now the year 2020, a year that will call upon you to test your willpower and resilience as much as it will test your depth of sensitivity and compassion. You will come through and you will shine as you have always shined. If we open our books and look to our past, we can see that the story that we are living now in many ways, has been lived before. But what is different now are the characters, the leaders, and that is you. May you learn from this time and not carry its burdens, but recognize your freedoms, and with those freedoms, may you continue on, bold and limitless. Congratulations, national student poets. I can't wait to see what you'll do.